alone, so alone. I was 35 years old in 1995 and younger. We were all younger back then. When I came out to myself and others as a gay man, and I was all alone and naive. I believed I was the only gay man in Indiana. When I told my wife what I had finally pieced together about myself, I thought we were the only couple in the Midwest to face such a crisis of faith, of relationship and love. When our marriage fell apart and I moved out of the house, I left behind my wife, three young sons, a church family. I left behind accustomed ways of being in the world. I left behind dreams of happiness, society's easy acceptance, the embrace of my growing up family. Alone, I stepped into the unknown. My employer turned me out the door. They had no place for a gay man at a Christian university. My United Methodist Church turned me over to Satan. They had reserved a seat for me in hell. From the bench, the court commissioner announced that homosexuality turns her stomach, and she never wants to see that happen to my children. The court told me what I could say, where I could go with my kids, eventually banned me from seeing them all together. I felt very much alone. I felt criminal, deeply flawed, a sinner. There were plenty of voices in my world telling me it was so. When I came out as a gay man, 22 states had laws on the books that it made it a criminal act for one man to pleasure another physically or express love and affection. Pretty strong message. The American Psychological Association, or APA, by that time no longer defined being gay as a mental illness. However, my brother, a practicing psychologist and director of a counseling at a regional medical center, testified under oath at my child custody hearing that not all psychologists agree with the APA's decision. He himself, he wouldn't trust me to be alone with his children. Then is now the church in which I grew up defined being gay as morally wrong, a grievous sin, an abomination, when I came out as a gay man, my fellow church members met in council. These were people I respected, worshiped with, prayed with, had preached to. They consigned my soul to hell, stuck, struck my name from the church rolls. I felt very much alone. Thank heavens, I eventually met a man who is now my husband, with whom I have shared 17 years of life. I cannot imagine a human being on the planet better suited to my temperament, values, and sense of humor. Dave and I were wed in Canada soon after Ontario legalized same-sex marriage. A couple years back, he retired after 25 years as chaplain with hospice at Ball Memorial. At his retirement party, he filled several tables with examples of the fabric art that he's created. His talent did not go unnoticed. When the call went out for artists to participate in the Palette of Diversity project, his name was on the list. Each artist will work with a committee to gather ideas and express a shared vision for the piece, he was told. Okay, artists, now go find people to sit on your committees. Dave returned home to find me. Next, he contacted a variety of people, asked them both to join in the venture and to suggest others who might be interested. One gay couple offered to hold, host the first meeting in their downtown Muncie home. We set a time. Actually, some of us gay guys just pulled a date out of thin air. Sounded good to us. Not until our lesbian friends pointed it out did we realize that we had chosen Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl in Indianapolis Sunday as the date for our first committee meeting. The day arrived. I was nervous, not as nervous as the Giants and the Patriots. I had to look that up this morning to see who it was. Our host greeted us at the door. As soon as I walked in, I knew I was not alone. We were a small group, but very diverse. Women, men, African-American, white, old, young, abled, differently abled, employed, unemployed, retired, blue collar, white collar, even one CEO, gay, straight, lesbian, activists, allies, advocates, as well as the shy, quiet types. There were even people there who were not there. Some had told Dave that they were willing to offer input by phone or by email, but they were very private people, read highly closeted, and preferred not to appear in public. Not to worry. We welcome participation at any level. We explained the purpose of the meeting. Dave was going to create a piece of art to represent the LGBTIQ community, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, queer, and questioning. The finished piece would be displayed in the hospital lobby. We wanted to create an image that would represent our community to others, but more represent it to ourselves. Something that when LGBTIQ people caught sight of it, they would say, I am not alone. They know about me here. Somebody has paved the way. We brainstormed ideas. Using the rainbow flag was almost a given. How cool is it that out of all the flags in the world, we get the one with the rainbow spangled all across it? It's a symbol most all of us recognize. We wave when we see it on the bumper of a passing car. 
We breathe a sigh of relief when we see it on the door of a counseling office. We beam when we see it flying from a house in a small town in rural Indiana. Rainbow flag, gotcha. How to reinforce and reference the closet that is such a defining factor in so many LGBTIQ lives and the coming out process. Well, we could have the art piece break out of its square frame, seem to be lifting up and off. We could incorporate the image of a circle, symbol of wholeness and healing. What else did we want to include? Family, now there's a thought. There were several parents and grandparents among our group. Many of us become family to one another. We who have been rejected by our own families of origin. In the end, Dave used Mardi Gras beads to outline two adults and a child, a celebration of family. How to acknowledge the hard times, the wounds we carry, we who grew up in a homophobic society, who heard the taunts and jeers, experienced physical, emotional, and spiritual abuse. As LGBTIQ persons, we know what self-loathing is. We see, feel, and recognize its effects in ourselves and in our community. Our artists came to the rescue here, pieced together sharp, jagged bits of fabric in rainbow hues to create quilt blocks that make up the artwork. As we put the pieces of our lives together, out of our very brokenness comes strength and beauty, color and vibrancy. As husband of the artist, I got a first-hand look at the hours and hours that went into creating this piece. The number of stitches that were put in, then pulled out, the angles that had to be adjusted and readjusted, the number of concepts that were explored, set aside, new approaches taken. Dave kept our committee up to date. At each of the monthly diversity discussions, he met with committee members to review the work in progress. Many of them joined us for the official unveiling this past fall. Since then, I've been pleased as punch each time I walk into the hospital to see that bright rainbow circle of life lifting off its dark background. Life will out, life will up. We're not alone, even in the darkest of times, in illness and vulnerability, amongst all the knowns and the unknowns, there is a supportive community bearing witness and whispering, you are not alone. Look, here's the work of a dedicated artist, gay man, retired hospice chaplain, compassionate midwife to the dying, deep listener, loving heart, speaking through his craft, a truth that echoes in the deep places of the soul. You are known, you matter. You are not alone. You are recognized, you are worthy of dignity and respect. We're here for you. We honor you. We, all of us, are in this together. You are not alone.